In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the relationship between the mole and mass and how you can use one to calculate the other. Now, this is really, really useful in so, so many questions in chemistry. Now, to calculate one from the other, there is a link. And that link we've already talked about in previous tutorials. The link is AR, MR, and relative formula mass. Now, it's really important you understand what these are. So if you haven't checked out those previous tutorials, make sure you do. Now, if you remember, all of these things for elements, for molecules, and for giant substances like ionic substances, relative formula mass, all of these are measured in grams per mole. Now, of course, that means that we can use this to turn moles into a mass. And of course, if we have a mass, we can turn that into a number of moles, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, just for, the, just for ease, really, is, of course, rather than refer to AR, MR, and relative formula mass, depending on what substance we've got, I'm gonna use a generic term. And that generic term is molar mass. So of course, if we're talking about a compound, we'll use MR. If we're talking about a salt, we'll use relative formula mass. And of course, if it's a single element, we're gonna be using relative atomic mass. But all of these we can refer to as molar mass as a generic term. So the first thing we need to do before we get started is of course, look at the equation itself. And that equation is number of moles equals mass over molar mass. And there's a few important things we need to note here. I'm gonna be using these following terms rather than write it out in full each time. We're gonna use number of moles as N, so N for number of moles. Mass, I'm gonna use W, and molar mass, I'm gonna use as a capital M there, okay? Now, of course, these seem a little bit weird because, well, number of moles is N, mass is W and molar mass is M because all of these actually begin with M moles, mass and molar mass. You can't use N uh, for them all. So little N for number of moles, W for mass and capital M for molar mass. Now what's also really important is that mass, if you're actually going to calculate the number of moles, the real number of moles, mass needs to be in grams, okay? So if you're given in kilograms, you need to convert that. So this is our equation for the relationship between number of moles, and mass using molar mass depending on what type of substance you have. Now, if you're like me, I like the equation triangle. So we'll just see what that looks like. So number of moles equals mass over molar mass. Now I want you to imprint that in your brain, etch it into your brain, never ever forget this little triangle here is one of two really important mole calc equation triangles here, okay? So if you want number of moles, that would be mass over molar mass. If you actually wanted the mass here, then we can use number of moles times molar mass. And of course, if you had an unknown substance and you wanted to find the molar mass of a substance, then you can use mass over number of moles to find this missing molar mass here. Now, one thing I want to stress at this point, which is really, really important, you have always got access to molar mass. Why? Because you've got access to it in your periodic table. If it's an element, you've got the AR. If it's a compound of any description, you can just add up those AR values and find M here. So essentially what I'm saying is, in a question, if you know the mass and you know the substance, you can find out the number of moles very easily because you've always got access to molar mass. And likewise, if you know the number of moles, you can find the mass of the substance you have because you always have, always have access to the molar mass, okay? So I'm just gonna run through a few examples of how we actually use this. So I'm gonna write a couple of questions out here now. Okay, so if you want to have a go of these yourselves using this equation triangle here, then I suggest what you do is you pause the video now, have a go, because I'm just gonna go through the answers. So if you wanna have a go, pause the video now. So here's how we calculate these. For all of these, number of moles equals mass over molar mass using this equation triangle here. So I'm just gonna go through the calculations for each of these.
Okay, so for each of these, I've used this equation here, taken the mass, 16.2, and the molar mass, in this case, the AR, because it's lithium we're dealing with, which is 6.9, which gives us 2.35 moles. Okay, I always write the units, even though there's no units of moles, I always write that afterwards, just so it's clear what it is I've been calculating. Likewise, for calcium oxide, we've got 2.5 grams divided by the MR of, uh, or the relative formula mass, sorry, of calcium oxide here, which is one calcium and one oxygen, which gives us 0 0.045. And of course, 10 is the mass in this one. And the uh, relative formula mass of potassium chloride is 74.6. And that gives us 0 0.13 moles. Of course, we can rearrange this equation to find the mass of a particular substance. So again, I'm just going to write out a couple of questions here. So likewise, as in the previous questions, if you want to have a go of these by rearranging this equation, then please pause the video and have a go now. So of course, in these questions, what we're going to have to do is rearrange uh, this equation up here to actually focus on mass. So mass equals number of moles times molar mass. And again, we've always got access to this in our periodic table. So here are your answers. Okay, so we have 10.5 moles multiplied by the MR of, this is ethane here, C2H6, which is 30, which gives us 315 grams. 10 moles is quite a lot, so we're expecting quite a high mass here. Of course, in these two, we're dealing with very small amounts, 2 times 10 to the minus 5 moles and 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles. Get used to using exponentials here because you're going to see them a lot in questions. But again, you treat them exactly the same. We've got number of moles times molar mass for each of these. And of course, we're going to end up with really small masses here because, of course, we're dealing with small numbers of moles. So there is a common sense check here, OK? Because if you are dealing with small numbers of moles, you're going to get small masses, all right? And like I've said in previous tutorials, you've got to get your AR, MR, and relative formula masses correct. Otherwise, these calculations are going to end up incorrect, okay? So make sure double check, even triple check your MR, AR, and RFM values before you plug them into these calculations. And lastly, as I mentioned previously, if you are dealing with a question, they're very rare in terms of an unknown substance and you need to find the MR of that substance, then of course, somewhere in the question, there'll be a way of you figuring out or you've been told the mass and the number of moles. That's the only way you're going to find molar mass is by having these two bits of information here. So the link between mole and mass is, of course, our molar mass, AR, MR and RFM. And you can use this equation triangle etch it into your brain to calculate the number of moles or the mass, or indeed sometimes you may need to find the molar mass itself, okay? So this is the first of two massively important equations for you to use in your A-level chemistry questions.